All right, so good morning, everyone. I am Gina Sudam. I'm the president of the Wyoming County Chamber of Commerce. And welcome to our Restart, Rebound, Rebuild series for the Wyoming County Chamber. And we have opened our series up to um, our members, non-members, and members of other chambers in other areas. So we do have some others joining us this morning, and I'm grateful um, that you're able to get on and join us. We have with us this morning some wonderful ladies from the Susquehanna Career and Technical Center, and we're going to be talking this morning about the green phase and personal services. So as you all know, probably the most exciting thing about um, moving to the green phase is that our salons get to open, right? So we'll be talking to some college cosmetology instructors, easy for me to say, um, from the Susquehanna Career and Technical School in just a little bit. I want to start this morning by going over some of the green phase changes and regulations that we'll see um, coming up. So we have no official date, let me start there. We have no official date to move to the green phase at this point. The governor usually speaks on Fridays um, about two o'clock and that will be um, when that announcement will happen if he so chooses to move us to the green phase at that point. Um, I am not privy to any information, so I'm not um, speculating. I just want to go over the green phase information as we have it because there are there are counties already in the green phase. So we do have the information at hand. First and foremost, um, telework is still strongly encouraged in the green phase. So those of us who are working in our lovely homes, um, if we can continue to do that, uh, we should continue to do that. And what we are doing at the chamber is doing a rotating schedule. So you can see the lovely Debbie is at the office today and Allison and I are being so jealous as we are working uh, from home today and we rotate. So yesterday I was in the office and, and so on. So I think that that's important for us to realize if we can work from the office or work from our homes, if we can get done what we need to get done from our homes, we should still continue to do that to limit our exposure and the exposure of others. Um, again, I'm reading from the, some of the CDC and the uh, Pennsylvania government regulations. So I just want to make sure uh, that I tell you everything correctly. In the green phase, all businesses, including those restricted or prohibited in the yellow phase, are authorized to conduct in-person operations as long as the business follows the CDC or Department of Health guidelines. So there are some very strict guidelines for, um, as you know, cosmetology, personal services, uh, gyms, healthcare, even restaurants at this point. Um, I do wanna point out though, um, that our restaurants are able to open this Friday um, in the yellow phase for outdoor dining. So um, make reservations because I think many of them are asking you to make reservations in advance um, to outdoor dine at your restaurants, but please go out and support our restaurants. They need your support now more than ever. So go get that cocktail and a nice steak dinner. All right, so a couple of quick things that I wanted to highlight, again, moving from the yellow phase into the green phase. All social distancing, and safety precautions still stay in place. Um, let me just start there. So, so even though we can gather now in the yellow phase was 25 people, in the green phase is up to 250 people, we still need to maintain safe social distancing. So if your facility cannot fit 250 people and safely social distance, then then that number is limited to how many you can gather at your facility. So I want to make that, that clear. Um, you should continue to provide masks uh, for your employees and they should be wearing those masks um, at all times. Again, 
This is directly from the Department of Health. This is not my opinion, this is, this is from them. Um, you should also be discouraging all non-essential visitors to your business premises at this point. Um, for the, let's see, so now for um, those businesses that service the public or might have outside visitors, again, they're encouraged to be by appointment only. And I'm just going to get into some of the occupancy. So for the, um, let's see, so if um, appointment only is not feasible, um, you should be following the uh, businesses who could have yellow phase 50% occupancy um, are now permitted to move to 75%. And those businesses, the ones that we're talking about today, personal services, those businesses are um, going to be allowed in the green phase to have a 50% occupancy. And we'll talk uh, more about that in a little bit. Um, again, we talked about enforcing the social distancing requirement, and that's where um, there's a note here. So um, it says, please note businesses must still enforce social distancing requirements, which, which may limit the occupancy below 50% or 75% maximum capacity, capacity. So be aware that you still have to socially distance, and that may knock down that am amount of uh, occupancy you're allowed to have. Um, you should be also allowing, and I think that this is very relevant to our personal services, you should be allowing specific times for high risk um, folks to visit your business. So those over 65, um, and that time should be at least once a week. So we see our grocery stores doing that now where they have designated over 65 um, shopping times. We need to make sure that we're doing that in personal services or in our gyms and salons um, because the, that population has been um, noted as higher risk. So we wanna make sure that we're keeping them safe. Um, again, the masks, um, we should be recommending that customers wear a mask. And again, this is uh, based on your business. Um, this is up to your business. The, but the documentation here says require all customers to wear a mask. And this is documentation from the governor's website. And I will provide the link to that. And I, and, and I just ask and, and remind you all to please be respectful of what the business owners have decided is best for their business, because every business owner is kind of dealing with a lot right now about these regulations and how to decipher them and what is best for their employees and their customers. So please remember that. Um, obviously, if you're working out in a gym, wearing a mask may not be Feasible. So that's really where that social distancing and that continued cleaning is super important. Um, if customers um, are uh, unable or unwilling to apply, um, comply with mask requirements, this says that you should um, try to provide, again, um, curbside or um, what curbside delivery or again remain that strict social distancing requirements um, and again to protect them or protect your other customers as well um, let me just go through and make sure I think I've highlighted everything that I needed to talk about um, we're going to talk about reservations in a minute oh also in the green phase some Facilities can choose, so prisons and hospitals may choose to allow visitation. That is up to the individual facility. Um, the governor uh, did say that. So I would, um, again, check with those facilities before you go visit. And I think that that is the same um, for nursing homes, but I'm not sure, and it doesn't specifically say here. 
Um, gyms are also recommended to do by appointment. So if you have an, an open gym, not a gym where you're doing classes, but if you have kind of an open gym setting, they are recommending that you set up some kind of reservation schedule so that you have a, an idea of how many people will be in your gym at, at a time. Um, and that's important, again, for that social distancing. Um, and then finally, kind of the last thing I want to go over is religious gatherings. So the governor, I thought that the governor had said these should not be happening. And then about two weeks ago on a conference call, he was con or on a press conference, he was confronted by this. And um, he did say that um, churches and other religious gatherings um, were never excluded um, from meeting. So in this document, it says religious gatherings, churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, and other places of congregate worship are specifically excluded from the limitations established by this guidance. These institutions are strongly encouraged to institute social distancing and other mitigation measures like masks, like masks at their gatherings. So again, I just want to make sure that you are um, all aware of that because that, that to me was something that I think people um, thought that churches had to close and I felt like that was a huge um, change for him. Um, now maybe some churches just chose to close um, and that's of course fine and up to those um, individual organizations. So now let's get into talking a little bit about cosmetology specifically. I will remind you that you can use the chat feature. So if you have comments or questions for um, those of us on the call, please type them into the chat and we will get to them. Um, I, I do have a question and we'll, we'll answer this before we get started. So it says, are customers required to wear a mask in the green phase or is it recommended? Um, this is a tricky question because um, this, this documentation, and I will link this, so the document I've been reading is guidance for businesses permitted to operate during the COVID-19 disaster emergency to ensure the safety and health of employees and the public. That's the document I'm reading, again, straight from the governor's office. The last time it was updated was June 1st. And in this document, it says, require all customers to wear masks while on the premises. Um, and then it does obviously make exclusions for those that can't wear a mask if they are medically unable. So I take that as, uh, again, you're supposed to um, re require unless they are medically unable. Again, I think that um, businesses need to um, do what's best for them, knowing that they really need to mitigate exposure to their employees and their customers. Um, and I, again, I can only tell you what is in this documentation. I am not um, an enforcer of this. I am just a, here's the information. And this is, again, my interpretation of the documentation out there. And I think that um, these ladies on our call this morning will tell you, of course, the same thing. What they're going to share with you is, again, their document, uh, their interpretation of the documentation out there. So this morning, again, on our call, we have three cosmetology instructors from the Susquehanna Career and Technical School. We have Sue Birch, Amy Costlo, and, or I'm sorry, Kim Costlo and Amy Bush. It helps if I can actually, you know, read my writing. Um, so sorry, ladies. But, um, they were gracious enough to join me this morning as our experts in cosmetology, and we're just going to talk a little bit. Um, first of all, do you want to tell us a little bit about the Susquehanna Career and Technical Center and what you all do up there? Okay, hi, I'm Kim Coslow. 
I'm a cosmetology instructor. I've been working here for 15 years, and prior to that, I owned and operated my own hair salon for 10 years. Um, we teach high school students, uh, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. It's a three-year program for the high school. I'm Amy Bush. I've been teaching for 19 years, and I owned a salon and worked in the field for 20 years before I um, came to teaching. And we teach, co-teach 10th, 11th, and 12th grader high school and enjoy it thoroughly. And I'm Sue Birch, and I've been teaching for 17 years, and I also owned my own salon for 16 years before I became a teacher. Um, always have loved the business, so be, being a teacher in the business was a good opportunity for me. I teach the adult students and the all-day students that come to the Career Center, and we also offer um, additional certifications. They're now learning eyelash extensions, microdermabrasion, glycolic peels. They get a nail certificate. We have cosmetology, nail technician, esthetician, and a student teacher program also. Wow. Well, you certainly are a, a great panel of experts. It sounds like there's a lot of experience sitting right there, and we are um, thrilled to have you on the call this morning. I could certainly use a little um, esthetician right now. <laughs> killing me. Um, I think it's too many Zoom calls. I've tried to position my camera all different ways, so I'm not turning my head, but I don't know. Nothing works, it seems, these days. Too much stress, maybe. All right, so let's talk about um, the phases and stages of all of this, right? So um, as I talked about, our salons have had to stay closed through the majority of the COVID epidemic. Um, we are at a point now in the green phase where our salons are able to open. And they are able to open um, in that green phase. But let's talk a little bit about what that occupancy number is and what it looks, what it looks like for salons. So what are some of the precautions that salons could take to comply with the occupancy? Okay, so if it's the 50% um, occupancy, say they had a four-station salon, we would recommend doing two clients at a time, 50% occupancy. Um, things that they can do, because it's not only about the safety of the clients, it's also about the safety of the stylist. Mm -hmm. So I think the first thing would make sure, make everyone feel safe. And you can do that through a sanitation station where you offer temperature checks, you have extra masks if the clients need them or the stylists need them. Give stylists the options to wear a full face shield if that makes them more comfortable. Um, the social distancing, have the clients wait in their car instead of a waiting room where they're touching magazines and there's more exposure. Um, and they can just be, you can text them or call them when it's their time to come in. Do appointment only, don't have walk-in services, um, make sure there's hand sanitizer available. Just the basic things that you've seen other businesses doing, but I feel like because hair salons were um, closed for so long, there's gonna be such an influx of clients wanting to get in and get their hair done. <laughs> yeah. They have to be prepared for that, and they just have to have you know certain, certain restrictions so that they can fairly um, service all clients. Very good. I think you went through all of my questions. Um, I'm like, wait, wait, no, you're supposed to let me ask the questions. No, I'm kidding. Um, I'm kidding. We talked about, so we did talk about walk-ins. Uh, you mentioned that a little bit. Um, I know I am a terrible salon client. So I am one of those people who wakes up on a Saturday morning and I'm like, I need to get my haircut today, right? Um, so then I call the salons and no one is ever available because no one is available on a Saturday. Um, and then I end up booking for three Saturdays away anyway, but, um, that is not something that we should be doing right now. And, and as a salon, so let's talk about that a little bit. Cause I, um, I don't know uh, about all of you, but I've already heard from my salon saying that, you know, as soon as we go green, we're going to start calling you and booking clients. So is that what you would kind of recommend to your salons is be ready and start start calling on your clients to book them, especially those regulars? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Because you're going to have phone messages and you're going to have a line of people. I would start with the regular clientele 
mm -hmm. and start calling them ahead as soon as you know you're able to go green so you have a, enough time in between each appointment to disinfect the stations also. And depending on the number of stylists you have to working, maybe they can do, um, they can differentiate shifts too and yes. have, you know, every other day mm -hmm. where they can, where they can alternate the clients coming into the salon. And yep. I saw a question pop up about being unrealistic for a client to wear a mask um, during a haircut. And I feel like as long as the stylist is wearing a mask and maybe you've removed some chairs and there's social distancing between the styling stations, then it would be safe for the client to take the mask off during the haircut. But again, I think that's an individual salon stylist decision, how they have to give the best service. And if, if they're giving a facial, obviously yeah. they're going to remove the mask for the facial. So right. I think as long as the stylist is protected right. and there's social distancing, then it can be safely done. Right. And I think that it depends on how long you're in the chair, right? So for me, I get colored, not that you can tell right now because I pulled everything up because it's my hair is so long right now. But um, many of us get colored. So when you get a color um, and you have thick hair like I do, it takes several hours. So I may not want to sit in a chair, um, obviously, for um, when they're trying to color around my ears. Um, I might not want to have my mask on. But again, I might want to do that um, as we as we move through that process, it may just feel better to me to, again, keep, keep my mask on um, during that time. So I think we need to respect um, how, how comfortable each other are and, again, what those recommendations from the salon owners. Because I think at each um, individual business, as we've seen right now, is going to be a little bit different. Um, but the recommendation is that uh, we try to wear masks um, when possible. Um, we have some really great documents that um, uh, have been published by uh, the Hygiene Association that talk about um, all of the different um, sanitizing, both for gyms and salons and spas. So I'm going to publish them when uh, we publish uh, today's recording. Let's talk a little bit though about some of those CDC guidelines that, that you saw in kind of researching this because I'm sure um, the three of you ladies in teaching this moving forward, right? So school is going to reopen in August and you're going to be teaching um, new students how they're, what they're going to see in the future, right? Because this isn't going away. Um, and the future of um, cosmetology is probably shifting a little bit, and some of these CDC guidelines are going to be really important for you to teach. So what, um, if you could maybe give us a few things that um, you're really seeing or that have, um, you know, maybe your top three, top five things that you're like, these are the important pieces. Well, I know we, we do want to start off with teaching and getting all students certified uh, with the barbicide. Um, and actually, we can put the link out there for the salon owners to post the certification that they took this course and that they were certified in barbicide, which is a disinfectant. And it uh, teaches you all the precaution and safety uh, procedures to put in place and as a customer coming to your salon I feel if they see that certification that you know it's for COVID-19 and then they have one a regular one so I believe that is a first step that we're gonna teach mm -hmm. but we'd also would like the salon owners to take it and it's online and and post that um, secondly uh, we will you know teach you know, about wearing masks. Luckily, we wear gloves already. So that's not a problem, especially with color. But um, gloves isn't a problem. The masks we'll have on hand, um, teaching the students, you know, the safety precautions um, and so forth. Okay. Um, so I know a lot of our salons have done um, that barbicide training already because I've seen it, but I, I, I would also recommend, and we've been recommending this for our businesses all along, if you've done specific training that um, um, teaches you the CDC guidelines or is additional steps to disinfecting your workplace, those things are things that you want to publish. You want to get out there on your social media 
you want to be ahead of that. Um, certainly the ladies coming out of, or the, the men and women, I should say, coming out of a cosmetology school, now they have this um, certification. They want to make sure that that's published on their resumes. And I think that that's important, um, an important piece going forward is to say, yes, I've been trained on how to properly disinfect. And I know that for salons, you've always had certain, uh, you know, all these disinfecting um, guidelines. So it's not, not necessarily different, but I think important to um, make sure we're noting and being aware of, because that'll make our customers feel more comfortable. One thing you talked about earlier was a sanitation station. Can you tell me a little more about what should be included in a sanitation station and what that is? Sure. sure. You have a sanitation station available for your clients. Um, when they walk in, you can have hand sanitizer, you can have Lysol wipes. Um, if they're using, say, a pen to sign a check, it's important that you make sure you have maybe a a clean pen um, cup and a dirty pen cup. So then you know you can take the, the pens and, and sanitize and disinfect them. It's the little things. So making sure that there's hand sanitizer at every stylist station, um, just making sure that that is available to the clients. Then it's up to the um, owner of the business if they wanna do a temperature mm -hmm. check, if they wanna provide um, masks and face shields and anything extra like that as well. Mm -hmm. else think anything yep. else you want to include? No, I, I saw the question pop up about the makeup artist. Um, she asked about the sanitation for them. Barbicide also has a course for makeup artists now to be certified and it talks about the disinfection procedures. Um, I would basically say as long as the makeup artist has their mask on and they show disinfection procedures, disposable implements, you know, not, not even cleaning and reusing brushes. No, I would say in this day and age, you get everything disposable, all the applicators, but Barbicide does have a course out for them also, and they're all free. All the Barbicide courses are free online. Terrific, and if you'll send me a link to where our salons could find those, I will post it when we post this video. I think that's important. Um, I had a question and it slipped away. I love when that happens. Um, it'll come back to me. So, I, and I think you just answered this, but how can salons get certified for disinfected, uh, disinfection procedures in salons? That's those online courses, correct? Okay. Um, I'm trying, man, I am trying to remember what that question was, but it totally, uh, totally slipped away from me here. I think we have covered um, the questions that that um, I have here. What other questions are out there and what things are you um, experiencing or thinking about? Um, what things that maybe shocked you in your, your industry right now that um, you need to do? I know, obviously, this sounds like a lot of added expense, right? Um, when you just said disposable makeup brushes, I, you know, I know how much these things can cost. So, so um, I, I have seen um, some small business grants out there. I will continue to share those. We share those on our website. Um, I know there may be another round of small business grants opening up for um, Susquehanna, Wyoming counties. So um, be aware of those small business grants and don't, don't be afraid to apply for them even though your salon um, is currently closed, right? So those, those grants, um, while they're maybe a little bit of money, but they may, they may help get that, um, some of those products uh, on your shelf, some of those disposable products. Um, I do want to share that the Chamber has some great resources for masks. One of our member companies, um, Cintas, does, a, does, does a, um, a mask program where they will launder them for you. So I thought that um, when I saw this program, I thought specifically of salons um, because I thought, you know, you're going to be going through a lot of masks. Um, and what they'll do is they will give you a supply of however many you want to start with. Maybe it's 500. And it, as soon as they're dirty, you throw them in the laundry bin and they'll come once a week and pick them all up and launder them with their proper disinfecting and then 
deliver you another 500 at that time they pick them up or whatever your magic number is. So that could be something rather than disposable. There's a lot, there's going to be a lot of waste out there, obviously, through all of this and trying to keep everyone safe. So um, just another option to think about. Um, I see a question um, coming in. Let me, it's a, a private question. So let me just read through this. But ladies, do you have anything else that you want to share right now? I was going to say, students, luckily, when they come to our school, a lot of the uh, materials and implements are um, disposable. Mm -hmm. So coming through the school, they're learning all the, the disposable implements, you know, the eyeshadow to the mascara brushes, like everything is, a lot of it is disposable. So I feel like they're kind of used to that. And then we can show them where you can, you know, the beauty supply houses now I'm sure will provide more of the implements that are, you know, disposable. But thank you. And, and I just want to add, too, I think for all businesses, not just beauty salons, but uh, massage therapists, um, chiropractors, anybody that has, like, that personal one-on-one, -on -one, I just think universal precautions is the way to go. I mean, we were trained on that. We train our students from day one on universal precautions, sanitation and disinfection. So with reopening, uh, maybe it's a good idea to have, like, a staff meeting and just review all the protocols for safety and sanitation and just follow universal precaution and social distancing. Um, so there were two things that I was going to say, um, and I remembered them, so that was good, right? So um, you mentioned earlier, um, you mentioned temperature checks, right? So you mentioned um, ch temperature checks, not only for your staff, um, but perhaps for your clients. And I do wanna say that I know of a few businesses locally um, that are open now that are doing that and um, not one customer has complained. So I think as someone coming to a salon, I would feel more than comfortable knowing that you want to check my temperature because you want uh, to protect your employees. So I, I would highly uh, recommend that. And I think that the guidance does recommend that as well. That again, anybody in these um, kind of personal services that you are doing temperature checks because I think it's important not only again for your safety as the employees but also the safety of your other customers moving forward throughout that day. Um, the other question that did just come in is um, so at 50% capacity many of our businesses will not be able to turn a profit um, we know, you know, we know this, this is the, you know, this is the hard truth right now. Um, and I'm seeing many businesses that are choosing to stay closed because they, they know that they can't turn a profit, um, especially, um, some restaurants, some smaller restaurants that if they have to take out half their tables, uh, it's, it's just not worth it for them to, uh, remain open. They don't have, um, enough outside seating or outside area that they could expand their outside seating. So um, I'm thinking there may be some salons that um, are still going to have staff that um, may need to stay on unemployment um, because they're only at half capacity. Um, so, so don't, don't be afraid to really, I guess, get creative, um, with what you need to do for staffing and some of those other things to make sure you, you certainly don't want to open your salon or your gym or, uh, your, your business and, uh, run in the deficit and put yourself in more of a hole, um, as we go through this. So, so be aware, talk to your accountant, um, talk to an advisor about that. Um, but I think I, I am seeing businesses that are, are choosing to stay closed because they know that they can't turn a profit at 50% capacity. Um, I would also um, say that there is no next step, right? So, so I, I've been on some state chamber calls, Pennsylvania state chamber calls that have said, okay, well, what happens after green? right? Um, some people call it yellow, some, or some people call it gray, I mean, some people call it uh, white phase. Um, no one talks about that, um, which again is kind of another 
we just don't know. Um, and we don't know what, you know, normal or is going to look like. So I think that just being aware and taking our, our proper safety precautions following these CDC safety precautions right now is the best that we can do. And um, just to be respectful um, and courteous of the decisions that the business owner has made for the best um, safety of their business and their staff and customers. Because every business is making the best decisions they can with the information that they have at hand. And it, again, the information um, can be interpreted differently um, for some people. And I think that, um, you know, we've seen it, the information changes daily. So um, I want to thank you ladies for being here with, with us today. Your information was extremely helpful. Um, we, I, I have to mention their fuzziness because we were, you know, we were trying for a long time to get their sound working and their camera working. Um, they are up in Susquehanna County. So rural Pennsylvania, as we all know, um, has some technology and, and some connectivity issues. So um, that is the, the, the fuzziness that you see is the connectivity of um, rural PA right now and um, our new normal of Zoom calls. So we're gonna have to deal with some being fuzzy, I guess. But ladies, you look lovely this morning. Um, your hair looks great, I'm very jealous. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, and we're we're so looking forward to kind of getting back to to our salons and going back to the gym and getting some of these uh, personal services back open. Um, thank you, um, thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you having us. If you need anything, let us know. Yes, yeah, certainly. Send me those links, and we'll get those posted um, with the call today. Uh, thank you all for joining us this morning. And if you have any other um, questions or comments uh, for me, please uh, email me directly. That's Gina at WYCCC.com. I'm happy to try to find the answers to your questions. I don't always have them and I can't always find the answers, but I will do my best to try. Uh, thank you so much again for joining us for our Restart, Rebound, Rebuild series. We will be back on Friday morning with cash management and um, rebounding your reserves. Sorry, I had to remember what our Friday session was. Um, and then on Monday, we start our rebuild sessions. So we'll do four weeks of rebuilding your businesses. So I'm excited to start talking about that and get, um, maybe digging into some more hands-on work on these sessions. So thank you all. Again, and have a great day, everyone. Stay safe.